Hello sailors, it's September 27th, 2022. Um, behind me, in the very bright exterior light out there, is a, a 3D version of the Paradox and Building Pathfinder. Um, basically what I've done since the last video is uh, coated each side of the bulkheads in epoxy, um, which involves a lot of sanding and some drips. <laughs> Um, I still have the drips on the final size to sand off, um, but what I went ahead and did was test fit everything there. Um, there's a couple guides for that. Um, basically started with bulkhead number three and worked forward and aft of that one. Um, instead of using like uh, wire nails or anything, I used uh, simple like drywall screws, uh, short stubby drywall screws as temporary anchors. Uh, they just seemed to work pretty well. Um, a lot of useful things, or <laughs> many useful things were learned from that. Um, you know, the, uh, the cleats need to be beveled, uh, both on the bottom side, those cleats, but also on the sides. Um, and so putting this together is not perfect because those haven't been beveled yet, but it, you know, really highlights the, uh, <laughs> the need for that and, uh, does distort the shape a little bit. Also, putting it together highlighted to me the uh, the difficulty in getting everything aligned vertically and the importance of blocking um, underneath. The little frame I have is kind of what it the uh, boat needs to be assembled on, kind of of necessity uh, upon. But uh, really need to use like I use a two by four or one by four, whatever fits appropriately underneath the the junction of the uh, <coughs> the cleat and the. Uh, the port and starboard uh, sides of the hull. Um, and as I put it together, I can see places where it's still a little low, so my uh, temporary tack uh, screw points are going to be a little off, so I'll need to adjust that. Um, in a moment, I'll probably just take a quick walk around around that and show you what it looks like. Um, but the next steps I see for this are ultimately going to be disassembling this and uh, then taking the, uh, you know, basically the bevel angles off of the plans, um, which might be a little more difficult than I expected. Um, uh, just because, you know, actually trying to find a protractor, I don't have a protractor handy, and uh, I have a rolling ruler from my navigation set, although I usually prefer triangles when navigating. Um, but the rolling ruler seems like it might work. But to actually measure those angles, um, uh, might take a little bit of doing and extending the lines and things like that. But once I have that, I can transfer that to an angle keeper and you know, at least get a, a basic idea for uh, what I'm sanding to on those cleats. A lot of it's going to ultimately be more fitting to the actual curve than necessarily what I take off the plans, but it's a starting point. Um, also, definitely see the importance of marking. And uh, as I've sanded, some of the lines I've drawn have gotten eroded. Um, but you know, remarking the center uh, points on the top beams of each of these uh, bulkheads, and uh, you know, in Don Elliott's guide, he talks about the importance of making sure you have a string from the stem piece all the way back along the center line, making sure that those are lined up so you don't build a crooked boat, and then also using some additional pieces of you know, just scrap wood or whatever you have to you know get. Uh, kind of a triangle, uh, diagonal pieces to hold that in place while you work through it. I think he also calls for cutting out some of the floor pieces in single solid pieces um, just to help maintain rigidity as you're working through this. Um, so yeah, the next steps I see there are getting those angles for the bevels, um, disassembling this um, probably in pieces. Um, I'll see how that works in practice. Um, it'd be nice to not pull it all to the point of uh, being flat again, but we'll see what actually makes sense. Um, but once I have those bevels, doing the sanding there, doing some cleanup sanding for some drips from when I double coated things, and uh, starting to work towards making sure it's all straight. That'll take more than one day, clearly. Um, but those are the next steps. So. Um, in a moment, I'll just uh, take the camera out there and probably just do it like this. Get everyone seasick or edit this out. So, this is the boat together in 3D. 
you can see some of these here where the heights aren't completely right or there's gaps left because I haven't beveled the cleats yet. Um, that's to be made up. Um, I found you can, uh, kind of like a Spanish one, let's just use a ratchet strap for a lot of these and having a ton of, uh, a ton of clamps can be useful just to make sure that it doesn't slide off. So that helped a lot in pulling this together. On one side, I uh, used some blocks that I just nailed into position to help align bulkhead number three. The other side, I didn't actually need that once it was kind of stably reinforced over there. But it was still a little bit tricky. Um, you could probably use just some little scrap blocks on both sides if you wanted. It's interesting, I really like to put a ladder out here in a step stool inside and was able to climb into uh, climb into the boat to get a feeling for the size. I've been watching uh, some videos on YouTube of a uh, scaled up paradox, and I didn't realize it was scaled up at first. So I'd had some weird uh, thoughts on the actual size of the finished boat. But uh, sitting inside of this one, I'm quite pleased with what looks like. It'll actually be the main cabin space. And just appreciating how big this thing is. Um, you know, it's about the same length as my kayak. <laughs> But at the same time, the storage uh, space, I can see where you could provision for several weeks or even a month, possibly. Um, like some of Matt's trips, I think, um, just in the volume here, even if you add an inch of uh, foam in here. Um, was able to also test climb through this, uh, the number two bulkhead here. And I can reach up into the, four, uh, <laughs> the forward compartment which will have a, that hatch there. But uh, that's uh, definitely not something that's going to be easy to get into, especially underway. So there'll be some definite, uh, definitely need to think about what gets stored up there. Um, i trying to think if there's other thoughts. One of the things I'm considering is I've seen some people modify their foredeck uh, just with a kind of recessed space to store their anchor, as well as, you know, either a almost like a thick PVC uh, uh, kind of channel for the anchor just going off the bow. Not quite a hose pipe because that's not going inside, um, but might consider something like that. I'm not sure if I want to put a hose pipe in and actually have the chain come down into the boat or not. Um, that's something I can decide on a little bit later. It does kind of break the watertight integrity. You can do some things to kind of close that off, but they're not perfect. Um, so that also might just be a modification that happens in the second season. I do like the idea of, you know, a clear uh, channel up forward to control the anchor, um, just to kind of keep things clear and keep it from damaging a lot of the other, uh, and just a lot of the foredeck there. I definitely see all the imperfections because I'm the one that built this, but things definitely do look a lot better once you coat them in epoxy and uh, you know, paint over that something probably you know, semi-gloss or something. Probably wouldn't be too bad at all. So looking pretty good. Uh, it's a bit of a disappointment to take it apart to rebuild it, but those are the next steps. Take care.